stream is technically live. So if I go to Twitch and go to main channel, live, okay, good start. This is a test. This is a test. I'm quiet. This is a test. <clears throat> okay, so this is a new test. This is a newer test. Okay, so this is a new test. This is too loud. This is a newer test. This is hopefully the final test. There we go. I think that's good. Alright, I think I'm all good. If anything, my game might be a little quiet, but that is something that we can very easily remedy. What's that? Oh yeah, I should probably make sure my my everything updated uh edit stream info dreams come true category minecraft can i add a chag for charity oh yeah you can add a chag for charity okay english charity so stressful <laughs> And then, where is the HUD? Oh no, it's just like F1, okay. Of course, it's a separate app. And I can still use it, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna invite you to a party and just make sure that the private game works. Perfect. Let me. So I think I remember to do. It. <laughs> yeah. So join right, slash... and then you do slash party private. Party private. And then we just go to four v four, right? And then you do full game. So you're doing four v four v four v four. Well, no, we're doing two teams, right? Yeah, but oh, but we're doing we're doing two teams on the four v four map. Got you. Got you. Got you. Your team placements. Let me copy. Balen's like probably not speaking up. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> um. Um. Let me find what I have, and I don't know what we're doing for the second game. So I have them <laughs> connected, of course. It's going to depend on what teams. Win. Let me yeah. end this. They end up with the bitches. Yeah. Message hi. That way you brought up to my front. And there's yeah. what we're thinking. So your teams are going to go red and green. Okay. Um. <clears throat> you should like have these open in like a different window. Right, save image as. Hello, my friend. How was that? I we weren't in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're we're figuring we're figuring this out. We're getting cool. there. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna start sending messages to people about what is going on. Okay. Um. So let's see. Where did I put that last year in? In this bracket me... channel. Okay. Um. So let's see. So, game A. Um, who did I say was running game A? That's going to be... That's, that's uh, Jacob. Jacob? Okay. Hannah, maybe I'm C. Um, okay, so... Oh, fuck. No, okay. I've, I goof, I've goofed this. You're fine. <laughs> um, I've, why am I opening up Microsoft Teams? 
No. <laughs> I got a fucking launch bed war. I haven't even opened it yet. Teams.png. Okay. I, I didn't give it a file type. That's why. I didn't give it a file type. We're good now. So I have the I have one picture for the teams and then one for the bracket. I'm gonna have that open on my monitor so I can actually look at it and be like, okay, so here's who I'm talking Oops, about. I didn't mean to send that yet. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> what you what have Let you me done just now? Copy all that. <laughs> Um, I hope I don't know here. Team uh, one and team four. I should probably drop my link too, shouldn't I? Uh, and then team two and streams. team three. Who's doing game B and who's doing game C? Kenner's doing B, I'm doing C. I'm doing A. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Then Muna, whoever's in the Muna account should a story about it <laughs> okay how's that look does that message make sense let me in the bracket channel bracket yeah yes yes okay that's kenner's link let me save that oh. and then delete his message channel delete oh, i probably just mistyped it okay uh here is my twitch oh. put that in twitch links um okay and that you're doing remind me you're doing round uh game a yeah i'm a uh, game a yeah i'm a oh was oak over oak <laughs> i mean thanks for being here already but what the heck i mean haven't even we're still working this out well okay. <laughs> first time chat poggers oh god <clears throat> not the stupid embeds okay oh, <laughs> Uh, I didn't get. Where's yours? Did you oh. did you DM it to me? No, I'm about to. Okay, just post it somewhere and then I'll put it in. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make sure everyone knows. Uh. Yeah. Uh, can you close? My computer's lagging because I'm running that. Discord and Minecraft. I forgot I can't do that at the same time. <laughs> God damn it. I was trying to do all this before. Okay, so Team I... Team okay. Alright. <clears throat> okay, second you're doing that could be worse. Um... It looks like everybody is... Well, Team 4. Uh, Kaylin Michaela says hi. <laughs> oh, Awesome. Um, Team Four is Team Four missing somebody? Oh, Sniper Dan, who's that? Um, Let me make. I'll, you guys focus on your thing. I'm just gonna make sure we have everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. Team Four. You know oh, they're missing. Know. They're missing someone. That's not good. They're missing uh, the person I, from our. They're missing uh, softly. I am gonna do a test run. Destiny, please scream really loudly if you can hear me from my living room. This is a. How is this not? Okay. Where? Oh, Team WPNG, and then. A bracket not. That PNG not save. Good. Lordy. My computer is struggling. <laughs> um. Did the channel get full? I'm confused. It has a 99 person limit. What? Why'd they say that? Channel full. Okay. Did you, did you break it? Where the fuck is Hypixel? Okay. Okay, so there's my teams. Oh, yeah, should we have like a. Is there like a link they can donate to or. Uh, they can keep Venmoing us. <laughs> do we uh, have they a. Shut down our, they shut down our store, so. Oh, dad, stretch it. <laughs> Do I have the bracket? I do not have. I'm not sure that I have a sub if these people don't have all their teammates. Like, I'm not sure that Strava is going to want to substitute. Maybe she will. <laughs> you never know these things. I'm going to pull Kenner up here because I want to know how his thing's going. Hey, Kenner. Kenner. 
Get her. Hello? Mm. Get her. Mm. Yeah. Hey, my brother. Hello. hello, hello. <laughs> hey, sorry, I warped you up here. Um, are you? Have you started your thing? Or I'm what, currently what trying to ping the last person. Let's invite softly. The person with the weird name, the wrong name. I see I that. Know. Yeah, make sure it's spelled correctly. But uh, how is it spelled now? It should have the X before the T. It's correct in the oh, announcements geez. channel. But they're not they're in not the voice online. call. Yeah, they're not online. Then they've they've been being pinged. Uh, okay. It's a turn. It's a turn. I can try to find them a substitute. Do they need one? Uh, potentially, yeah. Uh, it seems like if you only ask. Um, okay, we're having some trouble with... Uh, Team 6, I think. Apparently one of their teammates' Minecraft accounts got hacked. Oh. Okay, yeah, it seems like they, they want a substitute. Smiley face. Um, okay, so team six, who's doing, who has team six? Who's responsible for them? I'm not sure. Team, team six is in uh, game um, uh, A. Yeah, so that's so, me. That's you. Um, flying Faller, whatever the fuck, his account got hacked and he's trying to fix it. They said they're okay playing with three for the first game, though. Yeah. <laughs> Then I will start rolling out invites. All right, you get yeah. that taken care of. Kenner, I'll try to figure out your thing. Let me see if I can uh, hop down and try to get a substitute, okay? Five, team five. Kenner, will you, uh, can you let them know I'll try to find them a sub? Yeah, we can. Why did team one lose someone? Oh, my um, question didn't make sense to the question. Oh, we're team one. Mm -hmm. We should be fine. Oh, sorry. I'm fucking hallucinating. Okay. Let me hop um, down and see. I'll be right back. I got very quick. Where's Sniper Dan supposed to go? He's in main stage. Do we do anything? I don't know. Him? He might just be watching. I don't know who that is. Okay. I don't quite recognize that name. Um, because, yeah. Okay. I'm going to hop down. Where do we, um, <laughs> there's so many channels. <clears throat> and one. There we go. Gamer. Dragon Catcher's Nine. Put it down there. Flying Faller is the guy that got hacked. Avian Trumpet. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna go down. If Caitlin comes back, and then Kenneth comes back back up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I just want to make sure I have everyone. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, seven. <laughs> uh, do you want me to move back to the team chat I was in, or? Well, that's up to you. I'm probably just gonna, like, deafen in Discord. Alright, alright, I'll head back there. So let me just make, get everything else on my end here settled. It's gonna blue screen my PC and it's gonna be hilarious. Don't worry. So now I have everything I think I need. <clears throat> All right. I forgot how to do this. Alright. It's got a bit of death in me. Picture is good. Yep. 
pretty sure everyone I need is in the party. All right. Um, four, four, four. <clears throat> We're in a map. And then I'll. I think everything is how it should be. <clears throat> Good luck and have fun to everyone. And we're going to get this right underway. Am I on a team? I didn't click spectator. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I uh, may have made a fault. <laughs> We're off to a strong start. I forgot to create spectator. <laughs> I don't think I can. All right, so we're gonna just spectate from here <laughs> because I goofed this a little. All right, so it looks like red team is going to both Diamond Islands as they should. Green has started the barrage straight to the middle of the map, and they have succeeded in claiming the emeralds for themselves. Meanwhile, red has taken both diamonds as a fortress. Green now also branching out to the diamonds. It seems like a defense of wood glass and a bottom layer. Green's defense seems to be following this. Is that? Oh, it's on top. Okay. So yeah, green's defense seems to be a bunch of endstone as well. Don't mind that. <laughs> so far, a very unconfrontational game. Both teams deciding to just stop our resources for the time being rather than go right for each other's necks. Green still in the middle, taking control of total emeralds. Red giving that up fully on contesting them. We'll see if that plays out to their favor or not. Green now finally starting to make a push towards the red base with the staircase. The push has been noticed though, and the reds are coming to collapse. We'll see if this plays out in any regard. To the skies they go, and it seems like green is going to start with his attack and take one off the tower. It's a, not looking like he's going to be able to do too much, but he does get on top of the base and he will be a constant threat moving forward while the rest of the greens are able to keep running around and claiming all the resources. <clears throat> he realizes now that the time is better off wasted grabbing resources rather than sitting on top. Red is unaware of that, but there are now... Red now technically has access to mid if they so choose to take it, but that is not the favorable angle. But now the staircase that Red is building will add to that benefit. Green, once again, still just total control above their Diamond Islands. Red total control of theirs. Red is finally taking their first steps into middle with wooden swords and leather armor. They're going to just dog right onto the bed versus what seems to be a better weapons and enchantments on the green side a small fight is going to happen on the green bridge on a 2v3 at the moment the iron armor coming in should be able to clean that up and it does exactly that <clears throat> now there is a three-man strong aggression coming onto the red side we'll see how red wants to deal with this immediately want to go for a front line from the red he wants to try to claim one he does so now it's a two-man attack coming on to the red bed both of them going straight for the top i my loading <laughs> I don't have off fine either. This is horrible. So it seems like green has now fallen off of it and onto the bed. <clears throat> but with a single fire charge, the green is now trapped onto the left diamond of red. Again, not the biggest threat. Oh yeah, um, if whoever's over here just Thank you. Okay, now I can actually do this. All right. 
All right, now we can <clears throat> now we can do this as it was supposed to do. Because I did not uh, realize that I didn't do that. Wait. Oh, okay. <clears throat> we have a small push from red coming in now, but the armor and the weapons difference just is not going to mean anything for red as they are going to get shut down right away. Uh, I don't know. Is this the command? Oh, slash XG. Uh, seems like red now <clears throat> with control in middle rather than try to take any resources from middle they are just going to keep throwing bodies at green while they do take eventually a few emeralds and see if they can get out with their lives looks like the body block coming in from unsaged is going to be enough to get one emerald out but now jammer matt coming up behind just with his fists is going to once again take Shelter just up in the skies above the red base. Red does now have a heal pool. We'll see if that can account for anything. Because a heal pool can only do so much if you get blown right off the side. <clears throat> Fire charges flying in from above. Not going to be able to dethrone Gemma Matt. But an invis play right away from the bottom. Only able to take one glass. Oh, Gemma Matt's going to sneak in. He's got one more layer to go and he gets dogpiled on and with the other green that is going to be Dragon Catcher unable to fully get into the hole. Now leaves two green, two reds stuck in the hole of their bed as they try to get everything back together. We'll see how green wants to go about their other attack. Green has a golem set up so that will be their fourth man which fair play to them. <coughs> my throat big to bad we can do this out of allergies all right green is now going for a three-man offensive all hands on deck as the first offensive is going to be coming into the middle jammer mat versus high rolling panda jammer mat's going to come up with the dub even though he is low health he will have to retreat back on the bed we still have three closest to spawn with enough time to rebuild the defenses as they see fit all four of them now. We have High Rolling Candle once again coming out with, for an aggression. Man, I believe still not full HP, so a fight here would be unrecommended, which is why High Rolling Panel wants to push the offensive. But with just a wooden sword, there is not much to be had. <clears throat> with that, Green once again takes control of the middle of the map as Red just keeps on stockpiling diamonds, golds, all likes. <clears throat> so it seems like Red's play is here. I did not even see <laughs> Dragon Catcher has snuck his way onto the top of the base and is just going to be vibing up here for as long as he sees fit. They have a constant radar on all four <laughs> of the Red team and all they need to do is find the one window and it looks like here comes the aggression now they're gonna try to make something happen fire charge swinging a miss onto the bridge so this is still a two man technically a three man offensive until they find dragon catcher both all right three men onto the base it's gonna be a brawl the two greens go down and the third green will go down it is a flawless defense from the red side only losing one glass in the process Green's still probably fine on resources and likes. Now they have two iron golems vibing on their bed. Everyone get it out with iron armor, diamonds to the max. And everyone seems to be doing it just fine. Red, once again, seems to be slowly snowballing themselves, but without emeralds, they are going to be at a slight deficit until they can match the power level that green will be reaching here in quite a bit. 1 HP on High Rolling Panda. Jeremy thought he had finished the kill, but was just shy. Now the emeralds are going to be claimed once again by green, as they should be able to safely retreat back with another two emeralds in tow. We got here, we got Dragon Catcher moving up for another offensive, though not fully committing to it deciding to back off as high rolling panda makes his advance 
with no emeralds for another 30 seconds, a fight will break out. And it looks like High Rolling Panda had... Yep, High Rolling Panda is able to trade out one for one, which is not a terrible trade-off to have. And now we have Dragon Catcher here struggling to <clears throat> make any heads or tails of the situation. Now is going to make a play onto the bed. But with one player now camping out on top of the red bed, it is going to be hard for him to find any wiggle room. The bow is now set up as the reds have determined that this game is going to go to beds gone. We are going to play our numbers. And rightfully so. Just keep yourselves in a hole with resource gathering <clears throat> of all the diamonds to upgrade the forge to get all the gold and you will get there eventually. Green now trying multiple angles of attack still, but only one person pushing the bow is able to make easy work of the attack. There does seem to be a flank coming in from the reds, but is noticed very instantly by the green. As a matter of fact, as he cannot make the jump. Meanwhile, over here, we have fire charges and arrows all flying in towards Dragon Catcher as he eats all of them like a bullet sponge, sands that last arrow. I should not have said anything. Yep, red seems to be playing this very defensively, and green seems to be trying to play super offensive because they know that once it goes to beds gone, they will be at the man disadvantage. The iron golems can only provide it so much, but if they are able to stockpile them greatly, they could make a very good swing. At this point, I would be surprised if red doesn't have emerald generators. But it doesn't seem like they do. That seems like level two. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure you can eventually get emeralds and rares, but maybe they're just a few diamonds short to damage. Oh, oh, there's a bow fight happening, I see. We have Dragon Catcher versus, I believe that is Seahawk Simp. And while both of them trading arrows, this is just more stall. Unless this is a diversion for green of some kind. I don't know who's seen, so I can back up on that. Dragon Catcher once again going for a slightly different angle in this bow fight to get a little bit more ground as he is able to successfully get on top of this red base and red is immediately going to try to match him. The alarm trap goes off so that is one alarm eaten. More fire charges and bows are going to be flying in the way of Dragon Catcher but with 12 health he is sitting pretty up here. <clears throat> Still able to find and just be in, find the way to be a nuisance. <coughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> again more shots coming out red is determined it is not worth it to keep wasting these arrows and he can live up here because he doesn't really have much else he can do once he's up here because he's gonna need a full offensive from the rest of his team if he's gonna want to make a play at this point because they're playing this Super defensively, he can't really make a 1v3 play happen unless he has a knockback stick, but this map doesn't really allow for that, considering how wide the base is and the verticality of the bed defense. I would be surprised if we see that come to fruition. Back to the green bed, there's one person on green? There's one person on green. Looks like Dragon Catcher is still just being a thorn in the side, picking up a kill here and there. Again, with a five second respawn timer, it's not really counting as a window, I would say. You're still kind of just trapped up here. Unless they have an invis milk play going towards the front of the bed, they should have a pretty decent reaction time considering it is glass to wood to end stone to wood. That's a lot of tool switching that you do not want to be doing. More fire charges are coming out, but they will not be able to dethrone Dragon Catcher here as he's able to place more blocks right underneath him as he falls and able to safely land. At this point, Dragon Catcher has decided to make a loop de loop of sorts as he is back on top of the bed. Once again, easily spotted, not really much play to be had there. Okay, you have emeralds at this point, surely. These arrows just keep on raining down. Oh, he bounces back to fire charge. 
While comical does not really prove to be much of a threat to red, as again, here comes the invis play. Is it spotted? It was spotted. And the greens actually are able to break the bed. So now it is Unsage stuck in the bed with a gapple, now healing to save his life, but is just stuck in the hole and cannot get out. Unsage is going to fall. It is now three reds tunneling into their forge versus three greens who have been collecting emeralds all game, have probably full diamond armor, full diamond tools, and they have Dragon Catcher up here telling them they cannot leave any longer. Dragon Catcher going to give up a little bit of space, but now here back comes Jammer Matt as they plan to finish this game, probably on this push. Oh, Dragon Catcher is now down on the ground floor, but is going to be uncontested as they will wait for everyone to come in for a full-fledged fight. That's Jammer Matt, yeah. So as right now, Dragon Catcher seems to have fallen back just to make sure he can gather more resources. Jammer Matt has taken on the role of Radar. And I think Red think they might be okay. And here comes the dive from Jammer Matt. He's trying to take out one target, but he's unable to do so, only taking off one heart's worth of damage as the heal pool doing its wonders. You see red turtling, we're gonna see how green wants to push this advantage of having the bed. So all three greens currently on green, working it to get set up. It seems like a three man push is now underway. How do they wanna go about this? There's a lot of different ways to go about a turtling team. One of which is just chucking projectiles in, dumping a bunch of end or uh, dumping a bunch of iron golems to confuse them. We have the jump potion and the speed potion coming out from Dragon Catcher as he's going to just safely get on top of the bed. Everyone has everything they would need to make this fight happen. Dragon Catcher is now using the bed as his own defense. And another bow fight is breaking out between Avian Trumpet and I believe that's Seahawks. Yep. Oh, we have a bunch of bows in, and now the fight is happening out right into the forge. It's Jammer Matt and Dragon Catcher versus three reds. One red is going to fall. Two reds are going to fall, and it is now just high rolling Panda left on three quarters of his health versus Avian Trumpet is going to try to eat the ground apple, but not quite able to finish it as he's still able to clean up. It is now a 3v1 high rolling Panda versus the entirety of Greenside with a bed still up. This is a high, high, high... Uh, Piggy, sorry, I can't open up scoreboard because I'm bigger than me. Yeah, it's just High Rolling Panda versus Dragon Catcher, Jammer Matt, and Avian Trumpet. The red bed has been broken and they're trying to make their last push. High Rolling Panda just doing his best to take out the bridge as to not allow for any more pushes, but it seems to be for not as Dragon Catcher is able to get onto the bed. High Rolling Panda just doing his best to stay alive play for as much ground as he can but giving up the base at this point and the heal means he also gives up the heal pool dragon catcher is now closing the gap and is a diamond sword versus an iron sword high rolling panda should be able to win at least one fight probably not going to win all three and that will be game that is team six moving on to the winner's bracket while team five will drop down into the loser's bracket let's start off as a pretty interesting game considering i messed up entirely <laughs> and forgot to hit spectator Seems like the other games are coming to a close as well, so we will see. Can I actually hang on? Can I? Are there teams? I do not care. Let's see. Can I? Scene three. Oh no! Can I just? And then should we go? Bracket. Bracket.png. 
Oh, no, I have to browse. Uh, it's going to be downloads, probably. Okay. So here is the bracket. I can format this. There, that works. So <clears throat> this was match A, team five on the red side, team six on the green side. Green was victorious, so uh, they will move into first place game A here. You can't capture, I can't see my cursor. But they're moving up to match D as first place game A, while team five will move down to match E as second place of game A. I don't think you guys want to be hearing the capture sound the entire time. Uh, can I also add the teams? This? Yes. So how clear is this? I'm gonna make it a little bigger. All right, so yeah, we had Team 5 versus Team 6, High Rolling Panda, Unsage, Fulvade, and Seoxim versus Gemma Matt, Dragon Catcher, Avian Trumpet, and Flying Faller was unable to log into his Microsoft account, so they played the first match a man down. Still able to handily take over the game. As it currently stands, we're waiting on games B and C to finish. Uh, can I... I wonder if I can start playing non-copyright music. Immediately get a view bot ad. Nice, dude. Get out of here. Automotive associate. <laughs> Nicely done. As much as this is a charity stream, we don't condone view botting around here. We play by the rules. Yeah, I was wondering, like, before the tournament started, that these games would probably go pretty quickly at first, and then once we get into the three-team games, they'd be going a lot longer. So there's going to be just a tad bit of downtime as we wait for these other games. I'm not the best at entertaining, I apologize for that, but we're doing our best with how shoddy it may or may not be. We have an estimated 10 minutes going into... Looks like match C. <laughs> I don't remember how I filled time <laughs> last time. I'm not gonna lie. We're just we're just gonna vibe here. Uh, I don't think I can edit this on the fly, unfortunately.
I think we were waiting on both of the other matches because ours went by too quickly. <laughs> it was a pretty good stomping from Team 6. They just took total control of the middle. Team 5 played a little slower and tried to play their numbers, but the Emerald advantage just snowballed out of control, and before you knew it, they didn't have a bet anymore. At that point, they could just kind of keep throwing bodies until all four members dropped. I can't even go up to these guys. It's unreal. Hopefully these games are coming to a point where we will see a result. Uh, can I edit this in like real time? Okay, so... I wonder if I can do this. Oh, good lordy. Can I? That does not look good. Okay, hopefully... Okay, that actually edits in real time. Nice. Uh, okay, so, I I like how I did that, and then I changed, made it the wrong one. I'm a fool. <laughs> I'm a fool, and I deserve nothing but the worst. Alright, let's try this again, if I can. Can I erase this? Nope, it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, I should have saved this as a copy. I'm a fool. All right. Uh, so pretend you don't see this. <laughs> Let me grab a fresh one. Hopefully the games are coming to a close. Oh, all right, so first round of games has come to a close as of a team, and we are waiting on the next line of games to be played out or to be announced. So we have, well, have team six and team one at least moving on in the winner's side, and then we'll have team five and then team four moving down into the lower brackets. Where's my bracket? Oh, oh wait. Pause. So now if I do this again. It's back. <clears throat> I want teams above it. Make it smaller, move it over. Make it smaller, make it smaller. Mm -hmm. Too small. There we go. Unless the new bracket has been drafted up, I'll just make edits to this one as I see fit. Oh, okay, never mind. We have a new bracket. Okay, so here's our updated bracket. We have 
and you make it a little smaller so you can see that loser's bracket. So you have team six, team one, and team three moving into the winner side, and then team five, four, and two will move down into losers. And I have the winner's bracket side, so I will start rolling out those invites. Hi. Yes. Yes, I'm I was wait I was waiting for it. All right, so I have six, one, and three, so I've got Jammer Matt again. And then I need team one, so flame of war. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Crazy Joker 44. Oh, is that the right night view five? What do I feel like I've been at point night view? <laughs> All right. Anyways, team three, this the Spanish banana. The above one zero three one alive guy one and veteran DQ Flynn. Right. Yeah, okay, it was the right one. I just want to double check. <laughs> sure. Make sure I have everyone. So I should have 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perfect. Uh, try my last. As unfortunate as it is, it does look like they're going to be playing a man down. I should probably make it so you guys can see this. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> get some shape coming out from the sides as I should turn on sound again and we can get rocking and rolling. We have already from right, this seems to be all four teams roll and ready to go. That was a DQ Flynn, a dragon catcher. I need to control it, yeah. Alright, so it seems like we're all good to go. We have a private game, run a map, and I'm going to not mess up and but be a spectator this time. And we will get this game two rolling underway. I should probably tell. Alright. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, we didn't assign teams, but that's. Okay. Oh, no, we did, but I didn't check. Oh, no, it's in brackets, so hopefully it all came across. Alright, it seems like yellow is immediately going for their right diamond. 
Left Diamond was going to fall right away. I think it was green team. Yep, green is the vacant base. Blue has gone straight for the center of the map and will claim the two emerald spots, or is it just one of these? It is two emerald spots on this map as they see fit. Red is going to make a branching path from the center of the bridge, which is an interesting tactic because it could lead to a lot of vulnerabilities if that middle bridge gets taken over. Blue, this, I believe this is Crazy Jordan? No, this is Fine War. Moving around, just surveying the area, realizes he doesn't want to go for an attack just yet. He's going to wait for a few more resources before he does so. Yellow, taking advantage of the green base, because I believe we said we could do that. And blue, making a play for the other diamond that is between yellow and green. Yellow, surveying that blue has taken over this diamond, will choose to not contest. Sorry. Blue is now making an offensive onto red. I believe this is going to be Flame of War. Yep, Flame of War likes to play super aggressively and will try to get early picks as they see fit. This is a double contested diamond island, so it'll be interesting to see if any conflicts arise onto this side. Red now is going to match the middle bridge, and we will see a contest for the middle of the map. We have Flame of War here versus Dragon Catcher. A little bit of lag right there, unfortunately, for Dragon Catcher as he's going to get knocked off the backside. Reds still mustering up their defenses as Flame War will choose to back off and simply claim all of the emeralds in the center of the map. Blue now surveying the field of the green island. As he knows that yellow has once been there, more conflict happening on this middle bridge of red as now it is Flame War versus two and red now with a play Immediate fine onto Tetra's invisible potion, unable to make anything happen as a result. Dragon Catcher will go for the chase down, and while he may be unable to catch... Oh no, he was able to catch him. And now Red has their own share of the middle of the map, as they will pick up more emeralds. And now Red themselves are making a play onto the blue bed. That is one down with the iron armor, that's going to be an advantage, but the fire charge coming in will lead to a shortened run what how did you zoom and wisp why are you guys here thanks for joining in but yeah we're casting a bed wars tournament for my friend's uh student organization so nice of you guys to join in <laughs> of course you guys joined in <laughs> well, more fire charges coming in onto the blue bed as they are currently unable to get any damages done and blue will once again make their fixture known into the middle of the map it seems like yellow who is this it is yellow yellow has made their way to the center of the map from the diamond island as he will fall with the resources in hand that will go over to the blue side red and blue now jockeying for position of the middle of the map red choosing to go up high and play a slow game while one more goes to the bottom for the resources and attempts a fight this fight seems like it should be won by the red side no, he, he actually, yeah, he cases himself in, but will eventually... Oh, no, he's casing himself in fully, but he will fall at the hands of Dragon Catcher. You know, I believe this is Tetra. We'll get out with all the resources. And now there's another yellow on the top of the middle of the map. Unable to find any true positioning, just kind of stuck here with no good tools, but Iron Armor and a Stone Sword if a fight should arise from him. He's gonna go for a backdoor attempt, actually. This is pretty smart. There's only... Oh, no, there's two clues. <laughs> All right. We'll see if this gets matched in any way, shape, or form. Tetra is going... Un it's unnoticed. Wait. Wait. Do they know that this is happening? Now they are aware that this is happening. The fire judge comes in as... The love guy is going to be able to live, but here comes Tetra Does on the flank. It is now a build battle to the skies. As a live guy is trying to figure out how he wants to go about the situation. Tetra Doe's falling all the way down, unable to actually knock him down. So a live guy will stay up here for a moment. I don't believe anything's happening. Anyways, that's the flexion of the fire charge. We are still sitting here on this deck, but there's an invis play coming in. And Blue's bed is going to be the first to break off of the invis play coming in from Dragon Catcher. A little bit of a double team going on to the blue side. That one you hate to see. But now blue stuck in their base 
and Flame of War will actually be the first person to be fully eliminated from this game at the hands of Flynn. And now we have a live guy posting up onto the top of the entirety of the blue base as they are now holding and hoping for a 40 minute long bang out. Reds seem to be adopting the same strategy they had last game of using the Iron Golems as their fourth man. And while it doesn't seem like it's going to matter because they're not really getting attacked as there's going to be a small confrontation on this right diamond island that Dragon Catcher will win hands down. I really... <laughs> Yellow has adopted a defense of glass... Is that glass in there? Or is it just endstone? No, it's just endstone and water. All right. Water is unusually hard to deal with if you're playing in this game because if you're invis, you're going to splash and make a lot of effects and it's just going to slow down everything you do unless you destroy the source block, which red is going to have to find a way to battle against. Everyone seems to be playing it a lot slower now that a bed has been broken as blue, once again, is very hesitant to leave the base. A live guy still being a nuisance and wants to just pick a fight here. However, with the block placement, he's unable to actually get a line of sight onto Tetra. But the flank coming in from Night View will be enough to get the Thorn out of the side. Bear the Golem is the best fourth player, I would agree. They had a pretty perfect game, game one, with Barry the Golem. So we'll see if Barry can pull out the magic in game two. Oh, that was a bit broken. Yellow bed. Avian Trumpet has actually found a way with the invisibility potion to go straight through into the bed. Avian Trumpet will get found, but now it is just red with a bed remaining versus four yellows and three blues. This game is going to be grinding to a slow crawl here. As red, knowing that they're man down, they need to break the beds and eliminate enemies as fast as possible in order to make the numbers advantage seem less like a threat. And with that, they may actually go for a bit of ag aggression here onto the blue bed. We're going to see, I believe that's Dragon Catcher making his way onto the trail. He is immediately spotted out. <laughs> Fire charge is coming in and he's unable to save himself. But now we have a bow on the side of Zgemrat. As he's going to try to pick off players as they come across this diamond island. However, I don't think he'll be very successful. This angle is a very hard one to hit. And they are now aware that he's over here and will be very careful when it comes to crossing that bridge. Again, Red has taken full control of mid. Neither team really wants to push out more than they really have to. Yellow just collecting all the resources they can and getting back with their lives. Blue seems to be making a play for this green, which would give them extra resources, but at the same time put him at risk as he is being met, actually, by another yellow player. This is going to be the Spanish Banana versus Tetra, and as soon as the threat is realized, then Tetra Doge is going to back off with his life. Spanish Banana with no fire charges is going to let the man live. The Bob actually is going to fall. I missed that off camera, I apologize, but Dragon Catcher is going to find another final kill. Yeah, but not going to avoid. Jailbed. Yep, so I believe we have a 4v3v3. No, it's a 3v3v3, but if you want to count Barry the Iron Golem, then yes, it is a 4v3v3. We have some fire charges firing off into the sky, it looks like. That was interesting. But again, yellow claiming the resources of their forge as well as the green forge. And that was an arrow actually coming in from Dragon Catcher from the middle of the map that was able to catch him out. That was a very, very good shot from Dragon Catcher as he is just sitting up here as a turret to keep all of these islands on lockdown. As we see here, I believe this is going to be Crazy Joker, currently trapped on this diamond island with two bows staring him down. If he tries to leave, he is going to be facing the barrage. He's going to actually make a wall for himself to try to gain some ground. But the arrows and shots are going to be coming in. You have to be careful because you can still hit over that two block wall. You need a wall behind you so that you can eat the damage, but you can still stay on the bed. Fire charge coming in. Not going to find any benefits, but just crash down onto a bed, I believe. 
So Crazy Joker at this point probably has a good amount of diamonds in his inventory, but he, the problem is he's just jammed here. He cannot leave at the hands of Jammer Matt, just staring him down. Oh, fire charges are coming in as a distraction. And that way he is able to make it, Crazy Joker is able to make it back with the diamonds in tow. Jammer Matt, left unable to act, will simply retreat into resource collection. Or has he? He seems to still want to keep an eye on this blue side. He, yep, he's noticing. I believe this is Tetra. I see that short name tag, and I think it's Tetra. Yep, Tetra has made his way over to the green bed. And is going to continue collecting resources, but now that's an even longer way home if you are Tetra. The end chest proves to be very useful, as you can leave them in there. And if you were to fall at this point, then the resources in the Ender Chest would continue back into the team's forge for them to use. But as of right now, Tetra Doge is going to have a interesting time here on the green bed, unable to leave. Red seems to be making a new offensive. I believe this is Dragon... No, this is not Dragon Catcher. This is Avian Trumpet making a small push onto the red bed. And while he has placed the blocks, he seems to be hesitant about more fire chargers coming in from the green base. But now he's found his window of opportunity and he will make his advance known. There are multiple fire charges coming his way, including all three of those, and he will be stunted. Seems like red once again. This doesn't this like this is not a very solid bed defense by any means of the imagination, but the fact that they've been playing so aggro in breaking the enemy beds early means that they are left unable to act and there are no more aggressions coming out from their sides. So yellow has two members alive, blue, I believe, has three members alive still, and red, all three, with the bed in tow means an infinite life pool. As we now see red encroaching onto the blue bed <laughs> they're making a full-on wall to be able to collect these diamonds but still getting picked at here and there crazy joker unable to fully flesh out the wall before he needs to back up fire charges are coming in from multiple angles as this is tetra doge on the diamond island and once again the push will be stopped short <laughs> Ooh, the fire charge across the way from the red bed. Very good effort onto Tetra Doge, but unfortunately, no push was made. Now we got some trading of bow shots and fire charges, but damage will be negligible, and both teams will go about their day as normal. Really hope I'm not missing anything here. Even Trumpet got hit. That was the fireball. Oh, more fireballs coming in from Tetra Doge as Gem Matt will be knocked off the bridge, but once again, the health will be negligible as he will heal up very simply. The build battles will be continuing as normal. As we see now, this is an interpret. Gem Matt, sorry. Oh, there's an indisplay coming in from the red side as he slowly makes his way forward. He's picked up a block. He's got to be careful. I think, yeah, I think the block was noticed, by, and that will be one blue down as Dragon Catcher is now making an aggression onto Crazy Joker. Who, and Tetra Doge who are trapped into this bed. And now there's going to be a bow barrage from the upground, or from the upground, the higher ground, but unable to get any lethal damage in as both players will be able to make it back to the bed and the forge in one piece, only losting, oh, losting, only losing one member all in all. Oh, and now we have Avian Trumpet, or that's no, Gemini again. I keep missing Gemini and Avian Trumpet. I apologize for that. But Gemini now stuck on the ground floor needs to decide if he wants to make a play or or if he just wants to sit here and poke and retreat, he would choose the latter. As now we have Avian Trumpet going back for the high ground. I believe Avian Trumpet has some fire charges to his name. Fire charges at this point are not going to be very helpful because they can just stay in the all the way back of their bed and unable to actually be parted. But even Trumpet's found his opportunity. He's going to continue building a little farther forward, <laughs> unaware that there's a block right there. When he's waiting for the fire chargers that aren't coming, and as a result, he will be able to safely take a hold onto the top of the bed. <laughs> little does he know that Tetra Joj is making his way up in rebuttal. 
a fire charge trying to get a cheese kill off the side of the map unable to do so as both blue players are able to safely take hostage there is an invis now on top of the bed yep, the invis is now known tetra doge it has been knocked off an iron golem coming out from crazy joker but is a 2v1 in this space and it is unable to do anything the iron golem jammed into the wall unable to participate in the fight as blue will be eliminated that down goes team one the winner of match b as they will go into the second losers back i believe yes because only the winner from the losers back game will move forward and then the two teams from here will move forward the two so team one moving down to the losers bracket still very hopeful for them they're a very skilled team they should be able to make their way back through but it's all about team six this man down they just keep going for this aggression and now this is going to be a full-on assault onto the red bed there's two members left as the avian trumpet will be the first line of attack not many good hits coming out from avian trumpet though as he's down to almost a quarter of his health some potions will be drank and it's actually an invis from the reds as they were just going to collapse onto the last members oh no that was flynn that was flynn with the invis pot to get behind the red attack so both yellows are going to survive that's the wrong check <laughs> sorry flamer And now it's just going to be a constant amount of pressure coming in but at the same time it's just a live guy here with the one-on-one -on -one versus dragon catcher dragon catcher is going to be able to win the fight so now it is just the one member and he will not be able to make anything happen once again team six moving on to the finals as the first seed that was actually a very interesting game because I really like Team Six's playstyle here. They just go in super ham, super aggressive, and just keep everyone else off their bed by making it so they don't have a bed. It's this very simple tactic, but it works out insanely well. Let's see. Uh, so that was Team Three getting second. And team six will come out on top. So if I can pull up the bracket once again, uh, let me see if I can maneuver this. All right, we're going to hide the teams for a second. So yeah, we'll have team six and team one and team three, sorry, team six and team three will move on to the grand finals and they will place the winner of game F, which will contain the f winning team of team E, which is the losers bracket from the first round. And then also, yeah, so only the winner from team E from, wow. Okay. Pause. We're going to regain. All right. So the winner from team E is going, I did it again. The winner from match E is going to move on into match f second and third place from team from game d being team one and team three wait what no okay so i'm reading this wrong i'm dumb bear with me so team one went out first in match d therefore they will go down to the losers bracket teams three I think I said that right. Team one goes down to losers bracket. Team three and team six will go into finals. And then out of match E, the winner and the second place are going to move on to match F. Whoever gets third place in match E will be fully eliminated from the tournament. And whoever from that... And the winner from game F is going to move on to the finals. Just for jokes, I'm gonna time out with <laughs> 600 seconds. That's so long. <laughs> hold on. It's 10 minutes. Hold on. 
Uh, 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 uh. Did I change that? Where are you? I jokingly timed out Wisp, and I did not mean to do that. I apologize, Wisp. <laughs> that was a 10-minute timeout for no reason. <laughs> if you're still here, I apologize. And I can't even, like, open... I can't even open you up to... I'm out. I apologize. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. So once again, we are going to be just max relaxing until we find a result to match E. I will be keeping you guys lightly entertained in the meantime through random comments, I assume. I still find it weird that they actually took the time out of the day to come down here. I should have asked Where's my no mic? Alright, should we try again with the uh, Microsoft Paint edit of the bracket to make it clear who went who? Who went where? Uh, bracket 2. Open. Wait. It's not an image. I still can't open this. Hmm. Can I just like add a pen effect in OBS? Color source <laughs> that does not seem to be what I want. A text, none of this is what I would like, but that's okay. <laughs> Seems like we're going to be still at a slow crawl. Let me. <laughs> What if I just like do this? Well, we'll watch from uh Nope, 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 nope. You be gone. That was not what I wanted. Let's keep Kes for that shirt on. <laughs> Alright, uh if I just do this Jesus, he makes, uh, window capture, window capture two. Yeah, we're just gonna watch, uh, the secondary stream. Do this. I should let them know that. Get this good. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing 
pretty good. Those all look crazy on that. Hey, Diamond. What have you seen? Let's also reevaluate what we're doing. Give me a second, I'll uh, grab some blue ones. Okay, there's one blue going to yellow right now. There's a blue at mid. I'm making a push for blue at HEM. Yeah, he has. He has. I'm so stupid. Armor. I need diamond yeah, um, armor. Well, I caught armor in the top, so I'm gonna buy, buy armor. Uh, Gabe, you should probably buy armor too, so you guys can have some health. Okay, so let me pull up the teams. That's and we'll have revealed. that over nice. Big play over. Gabe's face, I guess. Okay, I so, Gabe is playing from <laughs> team two. I'm just gonna crop this like this, because we don't need to see teams three and six. So I believe it's teams three and six that are going to be moving on to the final. Right, I'm going to mute this for just a second for you guys. So this is team two, team five, and team four. The person we're expecting right now is I1067 on team two. All right, so... I'm gonna leave you guys in the comforting hands of Gabe while I run in the bathroom. I'll be right back. That was pretty decent. Close. Definitely did play with a bit behind, but we're also using the same one. The is laggy. Um, A. What the frick? Um, yeah, we should probably change our strategy. I think the proing almost worked. It's just you guys having a successful push in. Yeah. It's that we're getting bombarded by team one and team two. We're already getting destroyed. That's super helpful. Well, I was trying to, I, um, I was trying to pro up top next time. Yeah, See, I'm a professional on my job, and I definitely went to the bathroom before. Uh, <laughs> couple of them had we went for this. So as it currently stands, none of the beds, I believe, are broken. I can't tell because Gabe is covering them. But depending on the results of this game, the team that gets third place will be eliminated from the entire game. And the two top two teams will move on to the loser's final, and they will match up against team one. is an absolute troll. Yeah, I don't think they actually scored us yet, but Ish. I think they did just pump us. Uh, we have 21 diamonds. We should probably use some more diamonds. Yeah, let's see what we got. Um, yeah, I think we're actually slow. The other teams have less to say. I can definitely fix this uh, kill for um, Team K, um, hey, blew up Team K. Can I just buy some diamonds? Um, give yeah. me two yeah, seconds. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm close. Okay, you got it. Awesome. Jump. 
So as it currently stands, it seems like Team 2 is very stacked when it comes to resources. We'll see if that comes to any fruition, but I don't see a way this will happen. As it seems to be... Yeah, it seems like it seems like Team Two here is playing really defensively, just choosing not to make too much of an aggression. But it seems like now they are going to switch into this. I mean, they know that he's here. This is a really interesting play call, considering all the resources that. Yep, and there's the fire. <laughs> the giggle. <laughs> Gabe is coming at them with just the knockback stick. He's not even like hitting him with anything that's gonna do damage, and he's gonna follow his result. Wait, did you get the power? power did you get a power power yeah, bow? I got the power one power punch thing. Yeah, we gotta push all these things. Okay, so beds will be gone fully in three and a half minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go and it, it looks like this game is going to be going to dragons. <laughs> Do I have the team at least coming, coming up over? <laughs> oh, Softly is actually able, Softly, I remember from last tournament, who was able to make the push onto blue and actually capture the bed. Softly is going to now keep going. That's one bed down for Softly in one final. Yellow just. Yellow is starting now to play defensively. As Team 2 tries to make the counter-offensive, unable to do so. And resource stacking coming in from Team 2 as they want to try to make a play onto this yellow bed. Slightly throwing him off his game. I apologize for that. At this point, I can't tell if blue. I can't tell if blue is eliminated, or if they're still in it. Because again, Gabe's overlays overlapping everything. I do not full screen. I apologize. Oh.
they're they probably gonna no offer it. They're gonna do a grand push for us. We don't have enough um we don't have enough people to make it to the next round. Okay, I am so good to help this round if two of you wanna make a push on Gary. I'm gonna go I'm gonna try to go for Gary. <laughs> they're trying to make a push there's 22 seconds left until the beds fall but unfortunately i think they're a little too far even on this super small map it's just a tad too small to be able to make a proper push they all have diamonds. yep and there is all beds gone Looking at the Team 2 roster, um, Shady Oaks, Yuki Knight, Yukiro Knight, uh, Ike 1067, and Kitsi 2011. Yukiro Knight was actually one of the members of the championship team from last year's tournament. So we'll see if he can bring back the same energy. So ten, with beds gone, we have 10 minutes remaining until we see a full bow out of the dragons yeah no that i haven't got the dragons in so long i should yeah, get them yeah blue is out. mostly just hanging out in the base okay i'm down Yuki, i want you to tell me how far this is going to go give me 2 seconds i'm going to see one second let me get over there to look at the where are you at i'm at This definitely is not going to make it all the way through. Let me... Seems like at this point, Gabe's plan is to throw bed bugs onto an enemy base and try to get a cheesy kill in elimination. The problem is that the snowballs won't actually reach any islands from the home island, so he's going to have to venture out a little bit, which puts him at risk of fireballs or bows and arrows. I have three golems on me, it's fine. Um, so yellow has, they're just all sort of Those bed bugs are going to land on top and. <laughs> They're going to make the push, but I don't think they're going to do anything considering that Blue has lost the bed early and will be most likely turtling in the, their own bed. Let's not, let's not beat it this time, guys. Yeah, let's wait until we can get it to a spot in peace. I have some fire charges if there's any movement on any bridges. Yellow is all sitting on top of their base just waiting for Gabe. Wait, on top, on top? They were, they were for just a second there. It seems like Red wants to push a small advantage. So at this point, it is four, it was three Reds because Yukiro Knight was the first to fall. I believe there's also three Blues alive in this game. As well as all four Yellows still standing. Yellow was the one to break the blue bed. Ooh, and Kitty will fall, and that now leaves two members of red. No. Versus four yellows and I believe three blues. Remember, whoever gets third place in this game will be full eliminated from the tournament. Yes. Now three bud bugs going on to the yellow base again. Not probably not going to be able to make much happen there, but both teams. It seems like at this point, all pushes are going to come to a halt, and this game is going to go to dragons. Maybe. I mean, like, really, the way to get people off now. Turn down, turn game down a little bit. Basically, trying to kill them as the diamond armor is not a good idea. So, yeah, knocking people off is the best way. This is honestly the best way to do this, I think. We're, we're overwhelmed. Because nothing. <laughs> Where 
who's the one on top of the door now? I don't see them. Uh, there's now five people. Yeah, one of them on top. Two of them on top. It seems like Gabe at this point is trying to look for an opening. There's still four yellows. They're all just standing there. They're well aware of the situation that they're in with four diamonds. Probably a dragon buff in hand. They will be playing for the very end. They want to at least secure themselves a spot into match E. Red with only two members alive is going to have an uphill battle. So what you could also do is go kind of standing out. Oh, yellow's leaving, yellow's leaving. Yeah, one yellow is leaving. One yellow seems to have just made a small push forward. It's not going to amount to much, it seems, as they are all going to be able to just simply sit around. There's not much room for error on this map. You have like a five block gap between both of those islands. And as a result, you can't really look for any cheese. Oh, and now here comes the full-on offensive from red versus yellow. It's literally four yellows versus two reds. I can't see a way that yellow wins this unless they get the luckiest knockoff you could ever imagine. Fire charge coming in is going to hit a little low. And a barrage of fire charges, actually. None of which are going to be yielding any results. And while it does seem they are taking damage, it's not able to actually get any eliminations. Yeah, they're they're baiting out. Yellow's baiting this out really well and playing super safe. He's got Nedward Flanders down to Yeah, so this is team two versus team four with team five on the blue side. Got one. They run. Oh, Nedward Flanders is actually going to fall, so now it is a 3v2v3. The bow fight is still just... The bow fight is still strong, as we probably have another three minutes. Two and a half minutes, maybe. Until the dragons actually spawn. So at this point, Gabe is out of arrows, but unable to actually take any fights and has to now go for a dangerous bridge across. Softly actually will fall at the hands of Seahawks, so now Blue has the man advantage. Blue actually is going to have the man advantage going into the rest of this game. We have one minute until dragon spawns. And at that point, we should see a game end because this map is super small. So there's not much space for the dragons to roam freely outside of that. And on top of that, we have just low player counts means less arrows flying around and less defense to be held. And once the dragons spawn in one minute, after 10 minutes, if there are still more than one team standing, it will just... I believe it either just calls it a draw or... It goes based on player count. Yep. 
Blue Flame is really smart by leaving a, a source of water so that if they ever were to get hit by a dragon, they could easily climb back up. The only problem is if the dragon hits the blocks that the source is planted on, then they will find themselves in trouble. There's pocket fortresses now popping up on the blue side. They're just going to give themselves as much ground as possible. And here we go. Two dragons per team, and we will see how they battle against the dragons. Relentlessness of these dragons. Just the double push on just means that they will not be able to full on deflect a dragon at any point. Now, these pocket forts. He's now struggling with the concept of how these <laughs> towers are going to work. Yep, now there's another bucket of water just so they can have a consistent source. They just need a consistent way to get back up if anything were to go wrong. Actually, a good idea. I never really thought of the play here is to build towers up so that way when the dragons come directly at you, they aim for the higher ground and rather than dropping. Oh, and down it goes. I 1067. It teleported me the moment I fucking hit the void. All right, so now there is one player left on red, two yellows, and I believe three blues still. This is blues game to lose. And at this point, it will be red being eliminated based on player count. Oh yeah, yellow is gonna be yellow's gonna win. Okay. Oh, that's true. But yellow would be. Oh, oh, blue might have just got that. Oh, blue did not get blue. Yeah, they just got. Twenty oh. yellow for blue. Oh, I would increase their surface area. Like uh, the island. Yeah, the the two. Should tell Gabe he's my cameraman. Oh, and down goes one blue. So now we have a 2v2v2. Or 2v2v2v1, rather, sorry. There's only one member of Red Alive, that being Shady Oaks. I just fall and think of that much space. <laughs> so as much as this is a small map, this does seem to be not... The dragons seem to be spending a lot of time up above everyone rather than down on the ground floor. 
<laughs> oh, yellow falls, and so now it is one yellow, one red, and three blues. Two blues, two blues. And there goes yellow. Yellow has been full eliminated. Which means that we now have team two and team f uh, five? Team two and team five. Team 2 and Team 5 are going to be moving on to the Losers Final, facing off against Team 1. And then we will have Teams 3 and Team 6 waiting for them in the Grand Finals. And down goes Oak. And that was game. Team Blue is victorious. Team 5 getting a seed. The seed, the seed does not really matter, but at this point we are back to having games. Where is Christian? Whoops. Okay, you work on the bracket. Here we go. I delete intermission. If you're feeling charitable and want to donate, go ahead and scan this QR code, or you can donate via Venmo. Donations go to UMI Camp of Mula, we are a special food distribution organization at UMI. We specifically donate cultural specific food packages to immigrants and refugee populations. So, yeah, that was game... Food stamps from parents and go to them. Currently... Actually, I like game this spiel. ...update our donation goals. Last I checked, we're at 645. The other streamers got some more donations as well. Hello, my friend. Hello. Well, yeah, I was streaming game. I told him he's my cameraman. Uh, team six got first place. And that was team three that got second. Team one is down in losers. That's fun with me. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right. So at this point, the other game has come to a close and we are finally able to get the ball rolling on match F. To everyone who is still with us, thank you for being patient. Because even though this is our second time doing this, we really do not know what we are doing. But we are making this work one way or another. Uh, let me move. Can I make this smaller and have it still be readable? Go right there. Okay, yeah, that's still perfectly readable. Awesome. So, going into the finals with a bit of a break is going to be Team 6 and Team 3. And Team 1 will be uh, fighting on the verge of elimination down in the loser's bracket with Teams 2 and Team 5. I believe the final bracket is being rolled out, at which point I will start inviting everybody. I want to make sure I get all the right invites.
<laughs> oh, these allergies are really getting me. All right, so teams one, two, and five. I still got these. No, that's that is Gabe's Venmo for the charity that we are raising. So we will start with team one. Five. I came from my slash. That's still on. <laughs> no right copy. That's kind of fast. You're just faster than me at this. All right, so it's Seahawks simp. Well, they'd already been raided. I'm just gonna make him do this for me. He's... So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, shit, yes. Yep, thank you. I'd expect them to be able to have it unlocked. What are they pinging me for? All right. Looks like we are going to be rolling in here very shortly. Let me unmute the game. Sense the fire. That is going to be teams. Let me pop my teams thing again. Team two. Oh. Ah! I'm bad at this. There we go. All right. So team. All right. So that is everyone ready. And we actually have the Easter theme map. This map is really interesting because rather than the beds starting in a cross section, we have two beds on one side and then two beds on the other, which makes for a really interesting situation. As I don't believe we have a green team this game, so whoever is yellow is going to have a very distinct head start if they go straight across. But we will get rocking and rolling right away as we see all three teams. Yeah, we're going to have these three beds here in contention. 
as blue will be the first to place blocks on their bed making a wood defense yellow starting off right away going to the green forge and then red going right away to the diamonds which can very easily go into the center yellow also going for their diamonds they will meet be meeting red at that first emerald spawn and blue has started bridging to the respective diamond and opposite forge Red will be the first ones to the emeralds and we'll be claiming that as such. Red actually seems like they're going to be going for a fast play. Is this, this is Flame War who is considering it, but ops against it as he notices the bed defense requiring both a pickaxe and axe, which he may or may not have ready to go. But red seems to have taken a strong start into claiming their half of the middle, blue claiming the other half. Yellow, while they do have two forges, wrist gave up middle as a result and will be fighting for that extra space as a result. Blue not making a stake for the extra diamond. That will be very helpful to getting them snowballed a little quicker. As far as just tunneling a turtle and forcing themselves into getting an emerald forge, that would be very helpful for them. But they also have to be weary that that now opens an avenue for yellow to get a direct line of attack off. It seems for this first moment, we're not going to be getting much fighting besides Flame of War and Kitsy going at it with Kitsy coming out on top. That happened somewhere on the map. I'm unsure where. But it seems like Red is bolstering up the defenses a little more. Blue still with a simple two layer defense and yellow has evolved into much more. I believe that is glass, wood and stone and something underneath. So now we see blue going back into the center of the map, meeting red with iron armor. That is now flame war once again against Kitsy. But Kitsy has the upper hand with the positioning and is able to get the flanking attack. As Kitsy now is going to make a move for this second emerald spawn. Does need to be careful as there could be a secondary attack. And in fact, it is. It's going to be Crazy Joker bouncing back and making chase. Kitsy now needs to find her escape avenue, which she should be able to with the staircase here. Yellow, on the other hand, has made a bridge from the green bed to the middle island and now has another direct line of attack towards blue. So blue now in trouble has multiple lines of attack coming their way. They need to be very cautious about how they play this out. Kitsy deciding to fall into the void to not give up the emeralds as a result. And now we have red and yellow fighting over who's going to be able to take the blue bed. And they will both parade around it, so to speak. Flame War here is going to be claiming the diamonds on both of these spawners, while yellow simply retreats to the forge and will claim the emeralds on the middle. Just moving around here. It doesn't seem like there's much activity on this side except for this yellow versus blue interaction that is going to be kitsy once again but now this is high rolling panda has made his way all the way over to the other emerald spawner and a small scuffle here is going to result on high rolling panda coming out on top but at probably decently low health yep only two hearts to his name this is going to have to play the rest of his life cautiously if he wants to bring those emeralds home Moving on to the blue defense, we have all four members currently on blue as they try to conjure up their next attack while yellow is still claiming all the emeralds and making it at least to an end chest, if not a shop where they can spend them appropriately. We have one yellow on defense that is Flovade, will not be leaving the bed, and then we have Tetra Doge who is going to be claiming these resources as well as a battle coming out here against Seahawks. Seahawks Sim versus Flame of War. Flame of War will come out on top with two hearts of health with Tetra Doge close in pursuit if the need arises. Flame War realizes with so little health to his name, he will opt instead to take a fight. Tetra Doge comes in for the assist and claims diamonds as a result and will choose to back off from there. The bridge did get fireballed. I believe that was from a yellow and that will slightly stunt yellow's growth in terms of resources as sharpness and resistance but you will see them build that bridge back shortly i would assume as for the other side we still have three blues parading on their own bed while one blue 
is out doing mischievous acts. I have no idea. But now we have we have Crazy Joker making a small step forward, just surveying the grounds. Might be looking for a fight here. It's going up against Kitsy 2011, Enchanted Sword versus the Iron Armor. It's going to be close, but with the bows and assistance, it should be an easy fight for Kitsy. Yellow is still marching around the outside of the map. All three teams have had a uh, small access to Emerald, so we could see things start happening very easily. As all four yellows in close proximity to their bed. And I believe we have... We have all four reds also in close proximity to their bed. So once again, we're just staying on resource management side. We haven't really moved into a grander side of everything yet. We're just going to take this easy. Seems like a small scuffle is going out. He's on fire. Is it? Right. As Ike now has the knockback stick, which we saw him using a little bit in the previous match. But now unable to make any strands of bridges to make any more fights is going to opt to retreat. We have high rolling panda here making a small aggression, but with the fire charge at point blank range, that will be the end of that push. Blue now needs to rebuild their mid bridge and that could be resources going to another team. We have a red who made it all the way over here. That is flame of war who decided they wanted to try to go for a bit of an interesting angle of a fight is now running to the hills is able to save himself with that block on the side that was pretty impressive but just claiming all of the resources and is going to throw them off as he takes his own so playing more there just claiming all the resources and then throwing them off as to not forfeit them to the enemy team seems like we have a couple of red offenses on here and we actually have kitsy going for an offensive on the yellow bed while flopate is unsuspecting flopate is the only member on this bed flopate's going to fall this could be a bed break for blue side right away but it seems like a minor fatigue trap is in play crazy joker's gonna wait for this to happen <laughs> they realize kitsy now taking no enemies there's also an invis player here as that is now two yellows that have fallen yeah, Flovade and Unsage are going to fall. This is actually Tetra Doge with the invisibility. And Red making Red using their resources on a play that was going to work regardless of it. Flame War versus, I believe that was Ike. And that will be the fall. Uh, Ike as Flame War now is hunting for these final kills. As now Seahawk Simp is going to take a step forward and Seahawk Simp is going to fall. That leaves only. I could have sworn I saw the other yellow. There's on the other yellow on the run. Oh, yep, it's gonna be High Rolling Panda, who is going to be caught off guard by Tetra Doge, and that will be yellow eliminated from the tournament. Very valiant, very well fought. But unfortunately, this map just <laughs> leads to a little bit of chaos. Now see Sneaky Play coming in from the blue side on the back door. This is why I love this map so much. You have these two aligning corridors that you can just bridge across, and it's actually going to be Yuki Knight as he makes his push across. I don't think they're actually aware of it just yet as we see another aggression coming in from Kitsy 2011 who jumps over the fire charge is able to stay alive and deflect another one so there's a small block gap as they're trying to assess the situation but meanwhile Yukiro is pretty close I think he's out of blocks more fire charges are coming in but Kitsy is doing well to stay alive now she is stranded and I'm assuming with no blocks she will be falling momentarily as she does Meanwhile, we have assistance coming in from the backside as Ike is now looking to make a play with Yukira Knight. They have two members going onto this flank play. Is there any suspicion of this? I don't think so. I don't think they're actually aware that this is a play that could be happening. So now there are two members of blue in the attic of the red bed waiting for their moment to strike and they have no idea. They could theoretically go as far down as those torches and not be spotted because you would be no there's no reason you'd be running over here unless you wanted to go fully up.
Reds on the uh, Blues on the other hand are going to be leaving Shady Oaks to the defense and Kitsy as a diversion. While Blues are getting dangerously close to just dropping on the bed, there's a golden apple being eaten. As the flanks now coming in from Yukiro Knight, they're playing carefully, but Crazy Joker respawns with such unfortunate timing. And Ike as well. That was just a super unfortunate spawn from Crazy Joker as Kitsy. Kitsy eliminating or defeating Crazy Joker in a battle in the middle of the map led to just a snowball effect of just the respawns. And now with them being aware of that bridge across the back, there will be a fire charge thrown and that push will be stunted. No, no, we still see blooms wanting to push this advantage of this blue bridge. However, more fire charges will be coming in just to keep this bridge at bay. It's not going to be enough, though, as now Kitsy is going to try to be using this one. Was she able to get back here in time? Flitmore is actually aware of this at this point and is going to be looking for the fight. The fight happens and Kitsy gets knocked off in one hit. Now, Crazy Joke, no, it's not Crazy Joker, Flame of War, now looking on his own with the invisibility potion, is going to be going across super slowly, super carefully. See the footsteps. Now he's walking to not make a single sound. I think I heard the wood. Yep, Kitsy is aware that there's an invisible player on the mat. Oh, fall damage has been taken. He's around. He's, yep, there's Pixels and Flame War made one step too many. He is going to win the 1v1 with Diamond Axe. He's actually going to win with two. But now it's Flame War versus Kitsy. And Flame War with a heart and a half of health is not going to be able to take much more than that. <laughs> and the fadeaway is what we like to call that. From Shady Oaks to get the final hits onto Flame War. Flame War unable to break any blocks successfully. And now we have Yukiro Knight staying watch on the blue bridge as now crazy joker is going to be taking a stab at this blue bridge push with fire charges in hand it should be an easy landing second one will knock him back only slightly still simple landing so now red have shown their hand with the invisibility potion please Wait, is this a bed breaking Oh, it's, it's going to be obsidian coming out. I was wondering, I was like, where the heck is the hole? I believe it, this is just obsidian getting put in place. Now there is an invis coming in. That's flame more. But the invis has the sword out still. Hello? Guys? Oh, it was Tetra. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use commands as a spectator. So a slight misplay on the red side. <laughs> But it does not matter. There will still be obsidian on the side of uh, the red bed. As blue has bolstered their defense with glass at this point. Still not really making much more besides the dog. As some fire charges are going to be raining in from all sides. Not much able to be done. I'm not going to be able to get a clip of that, but that is perfectly fine. That was very funny. That's all four. There's three. Where's number four? Is it Yukiro Knight that's still standing back here? Yukiro Knight's actually missing, it looks like. The Shady Oaks. There's actually oh golems coming down from Ike at 67. As this is Flame War who's trying to make a play. That was an actually insane fireball jump onto the top of the base. And now he's got a little house. He's just he's got a home.
No, the arrows are going to be coming in. Looks like... Who's patching this up with wool? Some bed bugs are going to be thrown up here and it's up to knock them off. But Flame War playing the center of that block very nicely. He's going to be able to stay up for as long as he possibly can. He's waiting for fireballs, but I don't think they're going to be coming anytime soon. He's got wool and endstone to his name, but it seems like he will be just fine as he is. Right? Am I crazy or am I still missing one blue member? So you have Kitsy there. You have Shady Oaks and you have Ike. The alarm trap is going off as Flame War is going to fall down and Flame War is going to claim one life and one HP not able to pick up the second onto Shady Oaks. Where is Yukiro Knight? Non-existent. Hello? Oh, you can't. He fell into the void. I have no idea where he was at any point in time during all that, but he fell. <laughs> so as it currently stands, we have two beds intact. Red has obsidian on their bed and are now going on a full on offensive. Blue now dismantling this bridge as it is doing them more harm than good as they know they are slightly outclassed in terms of weaponry. You have to remember the winner of this match will be the only one moving on into the grand finals. So both teams are playing for everything here. While red definitely has the higher, higher jaw here. It could be very easy to see a blue invis backdoor on an unsuspecting red bed, which as it currently stands only has night view to defend it. And I must say there is a lot of holes. There's a lot of holes in this that aren't glass that could be easily exploited. Meanwhile, on the blue bed, we have Flame War still just being a nuisance to everybody involved. He's going to actually barricade himself in so no one can contest him from the back. So all he has to worry about is this front angle. As he sees the name that is Ike coming up from the back. He was trying to get an angle, but is unable to do just that. As he is now able to get through, that is when Flame War takes him up to strike. And now there's actually an Ender Pearl coming in with the Invis. That was Tetra Doge, who is so close to getting the bed. But unfortunately, neither will be able to get anything more than just the end stone layer. It looks like there was wood underneath there as well. So at this point, Red now knows the full extent of Blue's defense. Blue is going to be working to rebuild that end stone and glass. Well, Red now has a timer where they know what is all on that defense. All four reds currently posted up on their own bed as they figure out their next method of attack. If I left chat and scoreboard on, you might be right, Trumpet. I just, I just wish I could turn off the uh, bottom hood, but we'll live with this as we do. All right, now it looks like a layer uh, terracotta is going up on the blue bed. I think I did that last time, but I just freaked out this time and just did theater mode just because. But, well, we'll run this because I think this works out better. Anyways, we still see red just getting resources, gathering everything they can. And blue simply sitting on the bed as there's an invis from flame war again who's going to be using the gem potion and the wool to get as much height as possible as much of a defense as possible meanwhile terracotta is still going up just as a safety precaution flame war now has himself a nice little cubby where nothing can hurt him and he can hurt nobody be interesting to see this is a great period of time for a second attacker to come flying in a fire charge is actually going to boost him up onto the last layer and the second fire charge misses. So he will keep himself alive and just continue to be a thorn in the side of blue here. So at this point, we have team one versus team two remaining. Team, it was team five, was on the yellow bed and they were eliminated quite rapidly. Flame War actually making the very quick dive into the blue bed and finding his hole to get away with it. 
I missed that entirely because I looked off to the side. I apologize, but we got some. <laughs> Don't mind my trigger finger. It's all good. Hmm. The message still gets across. Anyways, now. Red, very much in a commandeering position to take over the entire game. We'll look to get these final few more kills. Let's see, Tetra Doge over on the Diamond Island, looking to just make up some ground while the two walls is not very respective of the actual distance carried out. Ike is going to fall. I would assume that was on the back bridge. And now Tetra Doge with a pearl in is going to catch Yuki Runai off guard. She nukes, and it's just Kitsy left in a one versus two, and she will fall as well. And there you have it. Team one, after falling out of the winner's bracket in round two, will be the first team to go up into the finals versus team six and team three. Thank you for the explosion. That was a good game. The random map was a little unlucky for all teams because that map is just kind of awkward. But we have our final set. We're gonna get we get the bracket back up. Granted, this is not the updated bracket. Do I have the updated bracket? No. Okay, and with this, we have Team 6 and Team 3. Going up against Team 1. wonder if there's... A, I don't know if we need a bracket to be made for this, or just... I'm just going to work on inviting everybody, so... Hey, Jacob. Howdy. Uh, so I'm going to work on finishing up the last bracket. Um, would you be able to just kind of like make sure your team is around? Like I haven't looked, but just see if they're like still on the call and if not, like ping them. Uh, I don't have Please. access to the calls, Please. so. Oh, shit. Sorry. Okay, team six. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I know. I know it's six. Yeah, six has three people just. Okay, and team three, they're all on their call. So I'm going to assume they're around. So let me finish up the bracket. So we had team one going on from our game. Okay. Damn, we are on schedule. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you guys lost quick enough. Hey. Watch your mouth. Last bracket. Oops, what the fuck did I just do? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That seems short. Where's my playlist? Okay, so let's see. So okay, so my highest seed for the peak. So we got six, three, and one. 
Team Six is. Do you know? I don't know if I've told you, but Team Six is my highest seed by far. Yeah, no, Team Six has been rolling this competition so far. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll have their work cut out for them in finals. Maybe they will. Three and one. Because. It... <laughs> yeah, they're kind of insane. I hopefully nobody's cheating, but yeah, they're fucking F FKDR. <laughs> The F kitty art. <laughs> Alright, so let me get the update bracket up. Alright, so here's our updated bracket. I'm just gonna zoom in on finals because that's all that matters. So here is our final draw, team six, three, and one, which if I can get the teams, oh, maybe. Dang, this has been intense. Yep. Yeah. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's everybody. Alright, I'm going to go talk to Gabe for a little bit. You're good to start whenever. Just shoot me a text when you do so I can start watching. <laughs> I have to shoot you a text. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to hit you up on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> Send me like a messenger pigeon. <laughs> Alright, see you in a sec. Alright. I just got from one for Okay, what's this? Okay. I mean, you get the teams. All right, so I have a ready from Dragon Catcher. Right, so I have team three, team six, and team one are ready. And we're just going to get rocking and rolling straight into finals, I guess. I should probably make it so you guys can actually see the game. Whoops. All right, we're good. I swear I'm good at my job. All right. Grand Finals, everybody. Team 3, Team 6, and Team 1. We have Spanish Banana, LaBob, Alive Guy, and DQ Flynn. I, once again, forgot which team they are on. All right. And it looks like we have the wrong teams. All right, seems to be your fault. All right.
So yeah, it seems like there was just a small mistake as Tetra Joe's accidentally put himself onto the green team. All right, I have to keep track of finals because I'm I I'll, I'll pay twenty bucks. So Flame War and Dragon Catcher on one final piece. Blue bed is gone. Run it back. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Run it back. This time we're on this map that I forgot the name of, but looks like everyone is ready to go and we are going to be rock and rolling blue right away going for the diamond island possibly straight to the green forge let's see if yellow is also doing the same thing sending two members that looking for a possible onslaught coming from the same method or they might be using this diamond island as a method to get in the middle it seems like they're going to instead ditch all the diamonds that are going to be on spawn and instead going to be bridging directly towards the green spawner Blue, on the other hand, happy with their diamonds in tow, will choose to just come right toward the bed. Yep. Um, in chat there, you'll have uh, the Venmo for donating. I would just leave a message that lets you that lets Gabe know that it's for Muna, not for McDonald's. Anyways, Blue's defense is going to be consisting of Wool and Endstone. Red seems to be following suit with Yellow, a slightly lackluster defense, but <laughs> Red is going to be the team to watch here as they are the ones with... I forgot what chat named them, but the Iron Golem that is permanently affixed to the Red Bed as a fourth man. All right. Starting out, we have Blue taking control of the middle through the Diamond Island, which is going to be a free double spawner of Emeralds. That should be able to help set up some very strong plays early on, especially against everyone else who seems to be content with just a singular Diamond Source. Red and Blue seem to be possibly contesting for this Diamond Source over here, as they have three Reds looking to make a fast push onto Blue. Blue is going to be a team... Six, no, one, two, three, can't wait. <clears throat> As we look towards the rest of this, the attack on blue seems to have settled and all teams have gone separate ways. Red now clearing out the next spawn of emeralds as blue seems to be dying a lot there was an attack actually coming down but it seems like it will be dealt with from the other side as blue immediately going to be a suspect of a double team but they will hold on as such so now blue with a bit of a bit of a gap in their market as they need to have a couple of uphill battles against them chainmail armor from dq flynn Unable to take it down, rather than push this aggression because they know there's going to be four on the bed, they are going to choose to elect the, or choose to take the resources and retreat. Yellow, on the other hand, with no solid connections to middle of their own, are also sacrificing their own left diamond for the sake of going for a fast bed breaking maneuver. As we seem, we have more. Yeah, attempts going over here. So Flame War is going to claim the Spanish man as life, but only after a small fight. And there goes another blue. And now the push is coming in between Flame War and Tetra Doge through the Diamond Island. There will be four blues standing to match this. We'll see how this can be dealt with. Flame War looking for a little bit of a block play, but we'll get traded out, and the fight will fall short as everyone will go the separate ways. Yellow into the middle of the map to collect the next spot of emeralds, which may or may not have already been claimed by the reds. I believe it has. And reds already with their fourth teammate, the golem, 
Praise be to the Golem, everyone. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the only thing permanent in this world. Blue now looking to just take out one lane of attack as they just want to keep the reds off so they only have one avenue to worry about. Red doesn't want to give this up too easily though as Dragon Catcher is going to be looking to take this fight head on versus two blues as he is doing very well. It's actually going to be Jammer Matt here. Jammer Matt here for the cleanup. Picks up two easy kills as well as all the resources that come with it. Blue and Nalo now battling in the middle of the map for emeralds, it looks like, and Tetra Doge is going to take those emeralds off the side of the map. We actually have all th one member, this is just the United Nations in the middle of the map. We have th one member from each team coming in to represent. We have a small train being run around. It's Flynn, Avian Trumpet, and Flame of War. And they're all, <laughs> Flynn does not want any part of this, and Flame of War wants all of it. <laughs> As the run just continues. And now we're gonna get Dragon Catcher in on it, unless he wants to retreat. Flame War is finally gonna catch up to Flynn. And Flame War now with another avenue of attack going this side now, sitting on the diamonds waiting for the spawn, is going to retrieve it and immediately check it off as to not forfeit it to anyone else. And the Dream Defender from German Matt already going to stuff the Flame War. Gabe, I don't know your full copy pasta for what Moon is raising money for. I know it's for, uh, like, you're raising money to make, like, food boxes for families, which is a very generous gesture in and of itself. But if you have a full, like, copy paste that you want to drop in the chat, please feel free. Of course they didn't send me the script. They didn't even pay me for this, bro. I don't even get paid for this. They don't send me anything. Anyways, we have... A live guy and someone else. <laughs> All right, so we are raising money for. <laughs> yeah, no, this is all going to charity. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but Avian Trumpet versus a live guy here. Avian Trumpet's gonna come out on top and look to just retreat with half of their health and D the you have the diamonds for DQ Flynn to collect. And I'm gonna read from. Gabe's copy plus here. So this is raising money for UNO Muno, which raises funds to donate culturally specific food boxes for refugee and immigrant populations in the Lincoln, Nebraska area. So far, we have raised $410, which is already just insanely generous. So thank you everyone who has donated, which is, according to Michaela, enough to feed 25 families. So that's 25 families that you've helped feed, which is just absolutely insane. Incredible generosity from everyone who's been donating. I appreciate it. Meanwhile, in the middle of this map, we have Dragon Catcher and Jammer Matt going against Flame of War. And it seems like they want to make this catch, but Flame of War, with enough block placement, is going to be able to make his run, but not forever. As we see some arrows flying in from all over the place, as Blue is going to be making a full retreat back into their bed. As oh, we have two numbers on mid, two members on blue, but now red with three members on this diamond island, possibly looking for a bit of an attack instead going to off from middle contesting these emeralds that have just been picked up blue needs to get out of here very fast <laughs> but smash banana electing to stay and stall the fight so that dq flynn can get away with all the emeralds but what dq flynn needs to realize is that flame of war is on the f on the prowl in pursuit wanting some of these emeralds as well the more catching a small fire he's gonna get found out pretty quickly and flanked the fire charge to blow up the entirety of the wall defense is able to shut him down not entirely though living on one heart and that will be the fall so yeah there's the whole of the game seems to have pushed into this section of the map right here as yellow has pushed forward claiming the green forge for themselves as well as just constantly harassing blue meanwhile red with two dream defenders is now playing a 5v4 before and just will elect to continue to be on an aggression while the entirety of the game focuses on blue. Seems like we have another push coming in from yellow here. I believe this is going to be Tetra Doge, as one fire charge will take out one blue target, but there's not enough to finish off anyone else, as Tetra Doge is going to elect to go from middle. DQ Flynn, conflicting on whether he wants to chase or just take resources, is going to elect to chase after a little while, but at this point, it's a little too late. He's going to elect to retreat with the diamonds in tow. 
Such as claiming all the emeralds in the center of the map. Oh, we have Final War got really close to being able to make a play. With all these block clashes, he's able to stay alive. And with arrows coming in from all sides, he survives with two and a half hearts. The Dream Defender is also now in a very interesting position. I'm assuming that was just an invisibility plus milk to evade the Dream Defenders for so long and almost get a block out of the way. But now blue coming on the backside of Flame War is not going to be looking for the best of situations. We have Dragon Catcher here with Flame War. They're just going back and forth, blow for blow. Dragon Catcher eventually is actually just going to elect to go for mid with Flame War giving chase. <laughs> That's going to be a speed potion, or is that jump? That was a jump. Okay. That speed. Oh, no. Wait. All right. I don't know how the potions in this game work. But now, there's going to be Dragon Catcher looking to push a small aggression with the invisibility now. So everyone is fully aware that he's over here. And that was Milk coming in. So they're just going to torch the bridge. But with the jump potion, they should be able to still make it onto the bridge if he so chooses. He could sneak onto here very easily, but I think... No, Dragon Catcher. Oh, no, he Dragon Catcher actually doubled back into mid and is able to catch Flame War off guard. So, with only like 10 seconds of invisibility left, I'm assuming Dragon Catcher will choose to just back off, collect emeralds. Yep, there's the glyph right there. So, Dragon Catcher just playing it safe, playing his life. No need to risk going for all that when you have all the resources in control. Yellow now has to rebuild their bridge across and free pickoffs coming in for Jammer Matt as that still leaves. Avian Trumpet, who was fighting a blue, possibly on their bed. Yeah, the pocket forward came in and almost... He got a hold in there. But it wasn't enough to go all the way through to the bed. And as a result, the blue bed will still stand. Blue's now making their own aggression, but the two Dream Defenders, plus now you have Avian Trumpet on the bed. This is going to make for an interesting situation. And then Dragon Catcher, with the nice read of the situation, is able to catch up and catch a live guy off guard. Yellow with this pressure being alleviated off them now has a chance to leave their bed and Flame War is going to take that opportunity with open arms as he defeats us. Thank you, Star Dreamer. <laughs> All right, Flame War making his bridge over to the blue side will be met right away by DQ Flynn. As a little bit of lag on that side, but a very close fight leaves Flame War with a heart and a half. He does not want to take any fair fights here. He wants to get a cheesy kill off the side. As he is going to get one more, but Bob in for the cleanup. As I'm going to, I want to try to keep my eye on red because they have been playing super aggro to just get all the breads broken as po fast as possible. Avian Trumpet actually just going to grab the diamond and try to go straight for the bed, but unfortunately a live guy is going to be behind to take him out. Yellow bed actually by Dragon Catcher with the invisibility pot. Yellow bed is gone and down goes knife you. Crazy Joker looking to be next. He's lowest than half, left, what, less than half HP. Dragon Catcher still fighting for his life with the jump potion. Unable to take any more, but one down plus the bed is already a massive deficit. As now Flame of War, who is away from the bed, is going to be looking for a way back home. He's currently... Let me out. Flame War on the green bed is going to be looking to just hold himself in. Meanwhile, another red versus blue offensive coming in here as Dragon Catcher... With full HP, could well make a play, but may be waiting for more resources in order to do so. As we have... As we have another invis coming in from Avian Trumpet. First comes the milk. Then comes the speed. Then comes the invis. He's got to play this safely. Here comes the jumps. You see the splashes here and there. Yep, and blocks are coming in. There's a pocket for it right in the front. I see he's going to be trying. This is a hole. Hole. The bed is exposed and he's able to get it. Avian Trumpet and pick up one of his own. Now it's a 3v3 versus the bed in an infinite life pool. Team Red just storming out into the lead. Immediately taking two beds within the span of two minutes of each other. 
and now the game is going to come to a standstill unless red wants to keep pushing some offenses so at this point blue and yellow are going to be hiding in their hidey holes getting as many resources as they can being super cautious with their lives as to not forfeit anything for free meanwhile jammer matt here with full control of even yellow even the middle as yellow has actually moved slightly up onto the green bed but jammer matt with the perfect read on the situation is just going to be monitoring them at all points a fireball came just to dissuade jammer matt from standing there but that will not dissuade him for much I'm missing a yellow yep so we have one yellow on yellow two yellows on green and all the blues are tucked away into the blue bed they've made up oh they have successfully created their wall to get at least one pool of diamonds for themselves this diamond pool was contested by yellow at the same time but yellow probably will not be opting to take that fight as they themselves have no bed see so yeah, red with full control now of basically the entire map from like this half of the map is pretty much totally in control of red and they can choose to use whatever tools they have at their disposal as they will is this Anubis? he was I'm trying to follow so the sword's out he's going to be making a play towards blue blue being distracted by the arrow shots from the other side they are aware of the invis play now but the play is not going to come to fruition as the red is simply hiding oh here he comes Trying to catch one player off guard is immediately going to be seen with the footsteps and is unable to get even one. He was able to get a live guy down to one heart, but unable to finish the job as he gets knocked into the corner and then onto the ladder, unable to control his sword swing any further. But now we have Dragon Catcher coming up for a slightly more aggressive arrow play. The heal pool from blue is going to be helping them regen a lot more, but the arrow onslaught is just too much. They can't get a solid shot off him to knock him off this one block wide ridge as they are just going to end up sitting here waiting. Dragon Catcher even pushing up onto the bed itself and just continuing to storm an onslaught of arrows in. And while some of these arrows are just missing wide, it's still enough of an onslaught. Dragon Catcher now with the sword out, trying to get as much damage in as possible, but everyone about half health and Dragon Catcher less will opt to just play for his life. What is that noise? Why? Why was that so loud? Oh, is that like an emergency teleport home? I would assume that's what that was. Yep, as he is back now on his... Back now on his base. Crazy Joker is actually going to be found out by Jammer Matt and eliminated from the game. It is now two yellows and three greens versus the infinite life pool of red as the emeralds are going to be coming in full for Jammer Matt here. Is that knocked into the void? Yeah, I think that's knocked into the void. But now both yellows are now left on green with a uh, constant radar from Jammer Matt, just always aware of where they are. As Dragon Catcher again is looking for some kind of regression with the jump potion this time, unable to finally get onto the blue and grab more final kills, but we have more of a standstill ahead of us. Oh, but red with a sneak attack play. It's going to be even trumpet. Getting Flame War and Tetra Dose to very low HP, but unable to finish any fights. As Flame War with the Golden Apple will be able to heal back up to full very easily, and Tetra Doge as well. Very good invisible invisibility potion attempt, but unable to reap any fruit. Again, we we always have Dragon Catcher going after these blue sides and immediately eating that fireball and bouncing in the wrong direction. Two Dream Defenders of their own onto the blue bed as Red is now looking to take this game by storm as neither team really wants to push up anywhere past the front line of the item they're in. Yellow making themselves a slightly phallic defense of a wall just to keep the arrow onslaught away. Blues are still huddling in their own bed with arrows just to dissuade any attempts from the red side as this is going to be even trumpet grabbing the diamonds and making a return this is dragon catcher grabbing some emeralds and making his return and both of which remain uncontested from all parties i'm more intended here still not entirely sure of how they want to play this one out there 
They could theoretically go back to yellow. I'm not sure if they're being spotted out because Jeremy Matt's here on the blue. But that would take a lot of awareness that they just do not have. Jeremy Matt's actually waiting to get a shot off. A very close arrow, but not quite the hit that he wanted. And as a result, he will just retreat as normal. Jeremy Matt just keeping a constant patrol on both of these teams. <laughs> just bouncing from podium to podium. Making sure he knows that no one is up to any antics. There's going to be no threat onto the red bed. And as such, they all three can leave and choose to make a full-blown attack if they so choose. And it looks like we're going to be seeing one again here from Dragoncatcher. Dragoncatcher looking for an angle. Oh, we have a double. It's going to be a double invis play. They're both invis, and here they come. Yep, here's the splashes. You have one up in front and one close to you behind. Immediately, the fireball onto the stairs is going to be able to catch him out. But the second one may not be found out just yet, as actually the Dream Guardian is actually going to be finding him out. And that's Avian Trumpet, who's still hanging on to his life. But one is now, yeah, that's Dragon Catcher, who snuck in and was able to finally eliminate Le Bob. And a live guy with the easy double kill, but at the cost of a team member. 2v2 versus the infinite life pool as now jammer matt is finally leaving the middle area to grab these diamonds that no one has been bothered to contest for taking a few arrow shots from flame of war but unable to reap much fruit from these arrows as jammer matt still just able to dodge at ease and grab all the diamonds and possibly get away if you know, the problem is the narrow bridge does not make for an easy getaway. We have Dragon Catcher again on half health, waiting for someone to walk around the edge. <laughs> They're going to just take the head-on fight, Dragon Catcher versus Spanish Banana. But with the help of the Dream Guardian, is able to take him out. Half a heart on Spanish Banana. But with the Invis Potion from Avian Trumpet, is so close to getting the finish off to the Spanish Trumpet. But the defense from a live guy is able to keep him alive. Thank you for the update on the pizza game. I appreciate it. So now more fire charges are coming onto the bridge that while that will not be enough to fully dissuade them from a jump potion play that is enough to at least stall the push out for another few minutes if anyone's wondering i think we still have another like 10 minutes 15 minutes until the beds are fully gone and then everyone is mortal fast right now red is on top of the game and looking to control the entire tempo of the match as you see, the red on Diamond Island, who's actually able to find a few blocks here and there, just enough to make his bridge across. This is going to be Dragon Catcher once again, who's going to be staircasing up and just falls in the wrong angle. And a live guy able to get the nice shot off. Again, we have Jammer Matt in the middle, looting all these emeralds, just absolutely free for the red team, if he, as long as he can get back. If he hasn't gotten back in a while, he's got to be sitting at least like 10 plus emeralds. I think now he's going to find his window to return. And that will be an easy collection for the Reds. Now, a live guy has capitalized on some of the emeralds. He has been gifted with diamond armor. I think they actually have an emerald forge. I'm incorrect. I don't want to be in any of these. Anyways. Red now just orchestrating their final attack onto the other side. Oh, we have a double ender pole play. This could be an interesting play out. They could go for either team with this because they're realizing that the fireballs mean that the bridges are not going to work. But the one thing that blue does have is they still have this iron golem with half health in 50 seconds. They could choose to stall this out or they could just go right for it considering that blue is probably sitting on more iron golems as it currently stands. They're actually going to make a two man push into the middle of the map. They're waiting for their angle to be right. Actually, all three. They have all three members currently going into the center of the map. And while we have yellow team still just holding themselves into the green forge, there's not much room for them to go. And here comes the invis and pearl play. One of them actually lands directly into the forge, and it's just going to be a full-on slaughter into the blue forge. The dream, the dream defender not able to get there fast enough, and that will be blue team eliminated. Very well fought from the blue side, but unfortunately unable to get any finishes as they were the target of a collapse from both the red and the yellows early.
So now red with total control of the entire map that is not the color green has a lot of options on their hands. They could have they have the emeralds upgrading in another 10 seconds, but I think yellow is going to play this out until dragons, but red does not want that to happen because we have six minutes until red bet disappears and they can take a fair fight. So red has six minutes to push their total advantage onto the yellows. The only problem is that yellow is probably pretty stacked in terms of iron and gold and able to just deal a copious amount of damage very fast with dream defenders and bed bugs and stuff like that. And we're getting a nice little red obsidian smiley. They put their emeralds to good use. <laughs> I'll wait until he breaks the wall out. There you go. <laughs> A nice little smile. <laughs> and we have Dragon Catcher here just surveying the field, realizing that these two have hold themselves in entirely. They're making essentially a battle arena here. So I think what yellow's plan is, is they want red to come to them. And at which point they're going to just be dumping dream defenders on top of them. But until they can actually get to that point, it's going to be an uphill battle for them. Because red, it needs to collect enough emeralds to get all the pearls and potions and strength they could ever need to make that push happen. Meanwhile, all yellow has to do is really survive just one push. And there might not even be enough time for red to make a second. But at this point, we have all three reds compiling onto the middle with pearls and wool ready to go. Everyone is coordinating their attack. And we'll watch this all play out. So Dragon Catcher is just standing in front, just seeing how they want to play this out. They've actually elected to back out entirely of... How did they even... All right. Such I had an invis, I guess, or a bug, but unable. I guess he, he might have invis just to grab some extra resources, but immediately, yep, there's at least six dream defenders thrown into the center of that fountain. But red with one of their own is actually going to drop Tetra Doge, and <laughs> uh, Flame War is going to be knocked off eventually by either a fire charge or a dream defender. But either way, that will be team six Jammer Mat, Dragon Catcher, and Avian Trumpet coming out with the dub for the charity tournament that was a very well coordinated attack and even with two sets of full armor two sets of enchanted swords and at least five dream defenders in that small space it just wasn't enough to power through they just went through it and they hit everyone off very well fought plan very clinical i should say very clinical play from Team Six as they're able to just wipe out everybody instantly. I'm uh, apparently I'm gonna be getting a winner's interview at some point, but I don't have access to the chat that they're in. All right, there we go. Uh, where are they? I don't know if like my mom sent me something. Hello. All right. Oh. Yeah. Hey yep. I'm in here. I've been asked to get a winner's interview. So, first of all, congratulations. That was an absolutely beautiful showing. And I just want to ask, being down one man for the entirety of that tournament, did it really affect you? <laughs> yep. And that was just play as aggro as possible.
All right. <laughs> So going into each game where you just immediately took control of all the diamond islands, took control of the emeralds, was there any time that you felt like you were possibly at threat of losing any of that? Or did you just go into every single fight determining, hey, we can win this out? They can't the stream. No, I fixed that. I fixed that. I just realized that. Thanks, 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 thanks. Okay, so... I'll just, I'll just summarize what you guys said because I messed that up. Um, so you guys played a super hyperactive style, taking control of all the resources, kind of wall off anyone else from doing that. In that process, was there any moment where you felt like there was anything that you couldn't do? Or anything uh, that you remember. couldn't take? Well, I I, we could... Second game, on the one on Pharaoh, that was one where we had a bit of trouble getting mid because the other teams were a bit more active controlling that when we were, like, trying to get that the diamonds so maybe for a little bit there there was also a bit of i guess at least when i felt the most threatened was i remember there's a blue member that was in biz that was going to our base if we hadn't caught that i think we might have lost the bed because we were all heading off his base yeah. um yeah uh, yeah so i'm thinking I mean, if there's one thing we couldn't do, it was beat Flame of War in a 1v1. So we really tried our hardest <laughs> to not need that. We really tried our hardest to not need to 1v1 him. And I think in that second game, I think we took a total of like, I don't even think we'd 1v1'd him once. I think it was always, we had the man advantage. Yeah, it was, yeah, either, you had, it was either you had a man advantage or you had someone from the other team in there with you at the same time. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but, go Yeah. But going Did into that final, why oh, I had I had to step out. Oh, uh, your know, Microsoft so account got hacked. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, he got fished. I, yeah. Unfortunately, do not click on uh, links from people that telling you that they're giving you a free VIP. Uh, <laughs> on it was it was yeah, funny. Uh, it was preying on my generosity. See, it sounds weird to say, but I don't want ranks. <laughs> <laughs> coming, coming from someone that had their Minecraft hacked, I get it. <laughs> and then... Yeah, it's. Did you have it hacked before the migration? Uh yeah, it was before the migration. Yeah, that's that's the time to get hacked. Uh, <laughs> that's the time. Yeah. You don't yeah. want this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess final question is uh, I had a good question and then I lost it. Um, so do you guys like enter tournaments like this like regularly or did you just have this invite come out of the blue and you're like yeah let's go for it there's a funny story behind that so I actually have been running like my own Bedwars tournament the past two years and this is about the time where I start planning and last year I wasn't too satisfied with like the format so I was like doing a bit of research like oh how do other people do their things so I actually just stumbled across the link literally Wednesday the day of registration which is why we signed up so late I'm like, hey, this looks fun. It's charity. Might as well do it. And yeah, that's how we got here. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming out. Congratulations on your massive dub. I think we're going to go into the general main stage and Kitsy's going to give her final words on the entire tournament. But congratulations on your win. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Wow, wow. Oh, well, well. Yeah, um, I pressed mute on th my OBS to mute Minecraft without thinking about the fact that I would also mute Discord. <laughs> no, I, I um. just, I, I had to say I absolutely love the awkward silence this in this stream. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, GG's all around. GG's all around. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a very, very uh, well played. Uh, bro, the no, power did, did you, so did, okay, okay, dude. <laughs> Last match, did you guys magic milk to get our bed? Is that what happened? Because we had we, traps. We always we, do magic yeah, milk. Yeah, they pulled that last yeah. match, too. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. always magic milk. Oh my gosh. They, okay, yeah, they that's where... That, uh, they pulled that in winter semis. Defense so. is dead.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah if dead. you're gonna if you're gonna spend three emeralds on an attack, I might as well cough up four gold too. You wanna know a good trick though? <laughs> Even if your trap can't detect invis people, iron golems can. That's why we had really them. iron golems. Oh, really? I pass it. They, okay. They okay. Walk towards them. Dream That's Defenders was actually really. Golemy was yeah. the play the whole time. Yeah. Silverfish many... do too, but they only last. Is that why you always had a golem on your? Oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sense, yeah. Yep. Okay. It all I makes got, sense. I got confused on that final fight because I placed five dream golems myself, and then I was getting killed by golems, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, I am I, I not, am I not paying you enough? Like, <laughs> 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 yet. You're revolting. There, there was there was something funny in that final fight. Uh, was like, uh, Avian bought a rush pearl or whatever the seasonal item is by accident. And I had an inventory bug that kept me from going in because my ender pearls turned into wool. Yeah, I, I, I had an inventory bug. My, um, my bow became fireballs. Like I would try to shoot my bow, and it would just throw a fireball. Oh, why did that? It's so weird. Bro, I don't know why that like, you had to have it on the same slot as as it as it like spawn. She's wearing the CLG red. <laughs> Okay, whole turn was scripted. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, whole turn was scripted, yeah. Hold on, he said. It actually was if, if uh, whole... scripted it so that I would win, but... That's why uh, Flame was worded. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, Looks why. like, looks oh. like Flame had a different <laughs> idea. Had different ideas. <laughs> Flame. I, okay. I, I also have to say that thank you very much for screwing up the queue on whatever the Jurassic map clone seasonal one is because uh, I don't, that's my least favorite map. <laughs> yes, dude. Okay, I swear it was not on purpose, but it was a good omen, okay? I did not want to play that stupid map. Bro. All right, friends. I'm going to get started with our awards ceremony. So, thank you all so, so, so much for sticking it through, playing all these games with us tonight. You guys were insane. Um, I personally was fighting for my life. I don't know about anybody else, but you guys were crazy. Um, you guys played super, super hard. Um, it was definitely not an easy, not an easy night, that's for sure. Um, a couple things I want to go through before we congratulate the winners. Um, I do, first of all, really want to thank um, our main caster, Jacob, who did an incredible job casting a lot of the games. I also want to thank him for this, my CLG Red jersey. Um, it has my, I don't know if you can see, but it has my Minecraft username on the back. So. Uh, he got that for me. He wanted to support, you know, <laughs> my Minecraft gaming abilities. So thank don't, you, Jacob. Caitlin, don't worry. I'm also wearing a CLG jersey myself that has my exactly. name on it. And now CLG is now defunct. So congratulations. That's okay. We'll, we'll bring it back. We'll start a Minecraft Bed Wars team. It'll be good. <laughs> um, then I, next, I want to thank all of you guys. Um, we got a crap ton of donations. Um, including registration fees and all the donations we received throughout the, the games, we've raised a total of $490, which is <laughs> incredible. Uh, thank you guys so, so, so much. Um, just to remind you what your money is going towards, we're going to use all of that money except the prizes um, to feed immigrant and refugee families in our community um, with boxes of food that is tailored to their needs and their culture. So thank you so much. Um, you know, if you're looking to donate any more you can do it through the same venmo link but honestly that is such an incredible amount we are so extremely thankful um the prize before i announce the winning team don't get too excited but this year we do have a real prize we will be giving each member of the winning team a ten dollar gift card i know i know go crazy okay we can't spend all of our charity money on the prizes but we do want to do something special because you guys played so hard um Honestly, you were insane. Um, and so uh, I'm going to kind of go through the, the rankings here. Um, Jacob, can you read through the rankings um, for second and third place? Yes, um, yeah, so second place went to, I believe that would have been team three. Because that was Spanish Banana, Labob, Alive Guy, and D. We got yeah, third, homie. I think it was team one. I, 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 think it was team I, one. <laughs> I thought you said. I thought you said third. What the? I thought you said third. I thought you said third. <laughs> okay, so place, my friends, go ahead, Jacob. Third place: the Spanish Banana, Labob, Alive Guy, and DQ Flynn. And who was in second place? Second place was Flame of War, Tetra Doge, Night View, and Crazy Joker 44. All right, friends, and give it up for first place. Jammer Matt, Dragon Catcher 99, Avian Trumpet, and Flying Faller there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great job, guys. I'm going to be honest. I'm glad you were down one person because you kind of stomped with just three people. So 
You guys were insane. You did an amazing job. Um, thank you guys so much for playing. I know you you sort of registered at the last minute. So we are so glad to have had you and to seeing you play such incredible, incredible Minecraft. Um, I will be sending you guys like a, a form to fill out with your information so we can get you guys those gift cards. Um, honestly, I mean, that's everything that we had for you guys. The one thing I do want to say is I hope, you know, if over my dead body, we will be doing this next year. So um, <laughs> I will be hosting it or I will be forcing someone else to host it because this is one of my favorite things we do every year. Um, so we are all invited back, of course. Um, it'll be around the same time. Um, we'll have a feedback form that kind of goes out after this, just to hear your guys' thoughts. You know, if you hated the way something was done or really liked the way something was done, just let us know and we'll try to make changes for next year. But other than that, that is the end of our uh, second annual UNL Moon of Minecraft Bed Wars tournament. So thank you guys so much for playing and for sticking it out tonight. Let's get a round of applause thank for you for hosting. Yeah, yeah, everyone, round of applause for Kitsy. Put heart and soul into this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I used the golf club on the soundboard, but it's not enabled here. <laughs> um, if you just, if you're like, I hated this tournament so much, I'm gonna delete this Discord server immediately. Fine. But if you stay, you're welcome to send messages. We have a channel for them. It's Make New Friends. Last year we hosted a, what did we watch? Did we watch Surfs Up? Yeah, Maybe something like that. Up. So we might have some events like that, but you guys are welcome to do that kind of stuff. Send messages all you want. There's lots of very cool people on this server that we would love for you guys to meet. Um, just so I, sorry. Uh. Uh, on that topic, like, can I get a little background on who you guys are? I, I don't really know anything about this uh, organization. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I'm Kitsy. My real name's Kaylin. Um, I started this club when I was an undergrad. La uh, we started it two years ago um, along with my friend Michaela, who is here, but she is actually currently in a play, I believe. So she's watching this from backstage. Um, anyway, so we started this organization um, during the COVID pandemic to kind of work with like people who we felt like maybe weren't given as much like help and as much resources um, to kind of weather the storm. So we donate boxes of food um, to like immigrant and refugees in our community. But we, so we're, we're from Lincoln, Nebraska. So that's where our donations are happening. Um, we've donated, oh gosh, more than 400 boxes of food, maybe more than that. Um, in the two years that I was there and probably more since then, um, we've raised about $6,000 towards that goal um, in those two years. Um, so we're hoping to make uh, you know a small a small dent in in the need that exists in our community, but yeah, so that's what all the money tonight is going towards um, those those donations of food boxes and stuff like that. And we really try to make them cultural and need specific, so we're not just throwing boxes of food at people, but we really try to listen to them on what they need and how we can actually support them. That's super awesome, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, um, I I think I remember seeing somewhere. Did someone at some point say you're all pre-med? Um, or... So the club is um, at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Um, so it's it's all undergrads. Um, most, I would say, are pre-med. Um, but it's also kind of has like a public health, global health focus. So it's probably 60-40 pre-med to not pre-med. Um, I'm actually in medical school now, so I, I was a pre-med, but I'm now just oh, nice. med. Nice. Where at? Uh, I go to UNMC in Nebraska. Ah, OK. The other club organizer is ending up going to pharmacy school, so. Oh, no way! Very cool. <laughs> In fact, oh. she will be going to school with me, so. <laughs> so, like, where did you get the idea for, like, having these charity Bed Wars tournaments in the first place? Uh, I like playing Minecraft, and I was like, I want to do something good with that. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I mean, you know, you can have, like, a a build battle or whatever you want to do but i was like i like bed wars even though i suck at it so uh i i don't know i decided to put together this tournament with the help of michaela um who you just heard she she helped start this um, organization and we'll be going to pharmacy school next year which is very cool um also gabe who is ike 1067 who helped cast some of the games he helped uh, put it together too um as, as well as some other people um but yeah, it was it was it was kind of my idea. It was kind of my my project to put together with with a ton of their help. That's that's great. That's fantastic. Also, the flame war got he what he what cut out. He got carried. What? Oh, <laughs> he's me. I, the most I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Flame of War, I, I don't know. know. This is of course, of course, because when we played some warm-up matches, we would always leave the bed, and whenever that happened, we'd always get killed. 
Then when you were on the bed, then why did it break? I am not that good, all right? Oh. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? You were busy following me, Chen. You were busy following Flint. Ladies, ladies, we're all pretty. Ladies, ladies. Thank you. On the note of War, I think you mentioned at the beginning of the tournament there was like an MVP poll or something. Damn. I think I speak for all team three. We will all vote Flame of War MVP. Yeah, we're all pretty. I'm obviously the best That's a given. Oh, oh. Shut it, Dave. Who, who, who wasn't on Team Six? Flying Faller. I think he's my MVP. Person. I mean, to be fair, he was in the call. Just in, he was just in the game in spirit. Uh, Most part, yeah. He was I in was the not. He game. was in the call for half of the. Really? Game. Shut up! He was in the call for the whole time. I was rapidly accessing the enemy team's computers to obtain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish. Okay, that explains why my kill aura stopped. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, that was okay, me. I'm gonna leave the call before I hear any more of this. But thank you. <laughs> Have a great night. You're welcome. Well, to TNT hang Tech out. side event went. See you guys. Organize that yourselves. <laughs>